Hello and welcome back to California Geology. I am Dr. Robert Lopez and today I'm going to talk a little bit about rocks and the composition of rocks in the in the crust and in the mantle and then a little bit about the density density of the um, of the lithosphere and the asthenosphere. And then we'll get to plate tectonic boundaries. So looking over here at our document camera, three words, felsic, mafic, and ultramafic. These are words geologists use to describe, to describe the compositions of rocks uh, in a general sense. There's one other category called intermediate, and intermediate would fit in the, in the middle here between mafic and felsic. When we start doing uh, igneous rocks, we'll look at intermediate rocks. Now for felsic, the key thing about felsic is think about this SI. SI is for, for silica. Silica. And silica is basically the mineral quartz, which is SiO2. Quartz. We'll learn about quartz next week when we do minerals. But we find that felsic rocks are common to the continental crust. To the continental crust. And they're typically uh, this granitic rock. So I've already showed you uh, granite here. Well, you've probably seen granite. It uh, has a combination of mostly light colored. Um, silicate minerals like felspar and this gray minerals quartz and it has a few of these darker minerals like biotite mica and some hornblende right in here but granite common to the continental crust now the next group down here are the mafic rocks and mafic rocks you know think of this this m and then and the f here for magnesium and iron so these rocks are rich in magnesium and iron, and they're common to the oceanic crust, right? So they're going to be a little bit more dense at around 3 grams per centimeter cube. This uh, uh, little fancy P is the Greek letter Rho, and Rho is a symbol we use, uh, R-H-O, the symbol we use for, for density, right? So note that continental crust is 2.7 grams per centimeter cube. Um, and then we already looked at some basalt, right? Basalt is this dark volcanic rock. Uh, here is some Hawaiian basalt from um, some of the recent lavas in Hawaii, and you can see they have the, the nice olivine crystals. If we zoom in a little bit on this one, you'll see that it does have this, this um, vesicular texture as well, where volcanic gas has existed, right? So here is an olivine basalt. There we go. There's a nice image of it. Now the next category are these ultramafic rocks. And we already have said a little bit about these ultramafic rocks, and that's the rock of the mantle, and you should know by now that that rock is called peridotite, peridotite, right? Note that it's very rich in magnesium and iron, common to the mantle. And their density, remember, it ranges from 3.3 to 5.7 as you go deeper down into the mantle. Uh, and uh, just to kind of show you again my, my nice sample here of uh, my, the xenoliths that, that are inclu inclusions in this basalt lava, right? This sample is from Arizona, the San Carlos volcanic field. Now, if we look down here, I, I've pointed out some densities. Uh, one of the tutorial animations I'm going to have you look at, uh, the geode animations, on plate tectonics will ask you, the quiz question will ask you about the densities of lithosphere and asthenosphere. So note that ocean lithosphere or ocean tectonic plates are 3.28 grams per centimeter cube. Continental lithosphere, 3.1 grams per centimeter cube. And the asthenosphere is 3.25 grams per centimeter cube. The key here is that, remember the lithosphere lies directly over the asthenosphere, right? Directly over the asthenosphere. And the lithosphere is less dense, less dense. That's a fundamental concept I want you to understand is that the lithosphere is less dense. In a sense, this lithosphere floats. It, it floats on a asthenosphere, right? It's floating on the asthenosphere. And because this asthenosphere one of the key things about this asthenosphere is that it flows 
in essence, it's going to cause plate tectonics to move. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, for plate tectonic boundaries, right, uh, before we even talk about those, we need to talk about the forces that generate uh, uh, these plate tectonic movements. And so stress, so all all stress is tectonics, right? And stress is a force, like a mass over an area, like the Pacific Plate working along the area of the San Andreas Transform Fault, right? So it's a force over an area. And um, there are three types of tectonic stresses. There's a, a tensional stress. Tensional deals with this extension. You know, you're, you're pulling apart. So you can think about a, an extension uh, a, a pull apart. So these are common to to mid oceanic ridges where there's a, a, a divergence. So often we call this a divergent margin. So that's really our first margin. And divergent margins are classically tensional stress pulling apart. The next stress is compression or compressional stress. Here two forces are moving toward each other. Obviously uh, the two tectonic plates, one will dive beneath the other. In fact, we call this subduction. Subduction. And in that subduction zone, we see uh, a convergent margin. So this is typical of a convergent margin. Convergent margin. And at these margins, uh, we'll see um, uh, an ocean trench, right? We're going to have a trench right here. There will always be a trench involved in the convergent margin. Here in California, Northern California, north of Mendocino has a convergent margin. There's a, the Cascadia subduction zone there. Now, as we go to the third type of stress, this is common to the San Andreas transform, and this is called shear stress. Uh, the way to think about shear stress is if you had a deck of cards here. So we'll look at this deck of cards. And if you could shear them, you, you'll slide them by each other, right? See how they can be sheared or slide by? And so that's what I'm sort of showing with these little block um, diagram uh, models here. So if we zoom in back in here, we'll see that, that one block is sliding by the other one, right? And you can see there's an offset. See, there's an offset there, right? And so that's typical of the San Andreas Fault, where this, where this block is moving north relative to this block, right? Along this transform fault. Often the, this is, so let's put a, this is going to be the transform boundary. Transform boundary. And the types of faults we see here, we call these strike slip is because they slip in this strike direction. They slip in the strike direction. And st think of strike as a compass direction for now. Compass direction. And that compass direction is obviously in the, in the, uh, is a, is a horizon. Another word we use is the, um, Another word we use is the azimuth. So azimuth, think of this as a horizon that's 360 degrees around, right? So there is our, there are the, the stresses that, and you can see they're related to specific tectonic boundaries. Divergent, convergent, transform. Now the rock will behave in a certain way, it'll deform, and we call that strain. So strain is the behavior of rocks to this tectonic stress, right? They could either behave brittly and break, right? So that's like a fault or brittle strain. And brittle strain is often a, a rapidly applied stress. So you hit the rock with a hammer, for example. It's going to shatter. It's going to break. Ductile deformation, well, that's uh, uh, like the silly putty. If you pull it apart, right, it's going to... It's going to stretch, right? So there's, and note that I'm, I'm doing it kind of slowly, right? Slowly. Uh, and then this elastic deformation, uh, material bounces back to original shape. And silly putty can also show that because we can actually bounce 
the silly putty, right? So I'll kind of bounce it here, see how it bounces. So that bounce is showing that the it's like a ball. When you, it hits the bottom, the ball deforms, but then it rebounds. In fact, that's one of the key words we want to add to elastic strain is this rebound. And the reason it's important is that that's how earthquakes occur. The elastic rebound, the rocks are strained, they're accumulating this deformation, this strain, but then when the fault slips, that strain is released and we feel it in the form of, of seismic waves, earthquake waves. Now, um, let's look at uh, the PowerPoint slide here. And this slide is showing um, earthquakes all around the planet. And it's not a tectonic map, it's just showing earthquakes. And we find that earthquakes occur in particular regions. And if you analyze these earthquakes, we'll find that they're the tectonic boundaries, right? Here is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge earthquakes. Here in California, San Andreas transform here and the Cascadia subduction zone to the north. Down in Baja California, the Sierra Cortez and Southern California, we actually have a little bit of a divergent margin where there's actually spreading going on. There's seafloor spreading in the Gulf of California and some of that is moving on into the Colorado Desert province. In fact, that province is called a pull-apart basin. The Salton Sea there in, in the Colorado Desert Province is 72 meters below sea level. So it's, um, it's, it's being pulled apart. And you can see there's quite a bit of, of tectonic margins down here in the Andes Mountains, big, enormous volcanoes, right? And then uh, this map actually highlights all the volcanoes and earthquakes that occur from South America through Central America and Mexico, here in California, up into Alaska over here, uh, the Aleutian Islands, uh, uh, the Kamchatka Peninsula, Kuril Islands, Japan, um, Mariana Trench and the Bonin Islands, uh, the Philippines over here, uh, Papua New Guinea, and um, uh, uh, Fiji, and, Fiji and Tonga, and then down here into New Zealand. And we call this the Ring of Fire. So this this is the Pacific Ocean Basin, and here in California, we have a, a front row seat. Uh, well, let's stop here, and then we'll continue uh, with transform boundaries. See you next time.